What is happening everyone? Today I'm here to bring you a brand new video, one I had planned to make for an obscenely long amount of time, but always procrastinating getting it done. That is no longer the case. Today I finally bring you this video. Okay, dramatics aside, if you watched my previous video, I showed you how to root the Samsung X6 Lite. And for those of you I'm sure you're already aware, once you root your device, you can no longer use OTA update. Due to technical reasons, I won't get into the video, but it leaves many of you stranded on an outdated Android firmware. Well, not anymore. In this video, I'll go over how to manually update your Samsung S6 tablet in the easiest way possible. The process is similar to what I did in the last video, only caveat being, this time around, we don't want to wipe our Android data or our personal files. As a technical person, I'm usually good at this kind of stuff, but I will admit, a couple times throughout this process, I felt like I was nearing a total meltdown and was ready to give up. So just to make sure you don't make the same mistakes, I'll go over some common errors you might run into and also how to fix them. Okay, so before we begin, here are some disclaimers. Whenever you're flashing your device, even if infinitely small, there's always a risk of damaging or breaking your tablet. So make sure you already backed up all your personal files. And also, before we start, make sure your tablet has at least 50% charge. With that out of the way, let's begin. We can start with downloading all the necessary files, starting with the stock firmware. Head over to Samfru, I'll leave a link in the description. Go ahead and enter your model number in the box here. For us, it'll be the Samsung P610 or just a P610. And here we're going to be choosing our region. For me, that will be United Kingdom. So go ahead and click that. Here, we can choose the firmware that we wish to download. For me, I want the latest version. So I'm gonna choose the one at the top. This will be the download page. Go ahead and click where it says slow speed, but be warned, the download speed is extremely slow. So slow that I left mine to download overnight. So it's best advice just to have it downloaded ahead of time. Once that download has begun, we can go ahead and start the next download, which is the Samsung USB drivers. To do that, go ahead and scroll to the bottom, and then click download next to Samsung device drivers, which will open up a new page, and then click here, and the download should begin. Next, I'll be downloading the latest Odin version, so use the link in the description, and then scroll to when you see the latest version, and at the time of recording, it will be 3.14.4, and then download it. Next, I'll be downloading the LZ4 tool. Uh, you can use the link in the description, and once you're there, go ahead and scroll to the bottom, and then pick the version that fits your PC. For me, that will be the Windows 64 version, and then go ahead and save that. And if you don't already have it, the last thing we're going to be downloading is the 7-zip. So go into the home page and then download the latest version. After downloading everything, I move them all to the desktop so they're ready to be installed. Okay, next we're going to work on the stock firmware. So go ahead and select it, and then go on 7-zip, and then go and click on this button here, extract to. And this will extract it to your desktop, which will take some time. Once the extraction is complete, you're going to be left with this folder. And inside that will be four more archives. And the one we're interested in is the largest one there, which is the AP folder. And the same as before, we're going to go ahead and extract it by first right clicking and then go on 7-zip and then go on extract to. Once that is completed, we're going to go ahead into the extracted folder, which is going to give us a couple more files. The one we are interested in is the boot.img.lc.4. I'm going to go ahead and drag the file onto the desktop. From the desktop, open up the LZ4 folder and then drag the boot file onto the LZ4 folder. From here, drag the boot file and drop it onto the LZ4 application. And what this does is uh, it decompresses the LZ4 file into an image file. And once that's done, it's going to give you a new file called boot. We're going to go ahead and drag that to the desktop. At this point, you're going to want to connect your tablet to the PC and go ahead and open it up. Once you are connected, go ahead and transfer your boot file over to your tablet. You can save it anywhere you like. I'm going to save it to a download folder for ease of access. Just let that finish. And once that is done, we can go with the tablet and start the next step. Okay, the first thing we're going to do on the tablet is open up Magisk. And then we're going to go and click Update. And then for the on-screen instructions, press Install. At this point, Magisk might close down and also ask you for permission. Go ahead, allow it, and then keep following on-screen instructions until it is fully installed. 
After you have updated badges to its latest version, go ahead and open up once more. And once it's open, go ahead and press update. And then click select and patch a file. And then locate the boot file that you transferred from your PC. And then select it. And then tap on let's go. And that will start the patching process, which should take only a couple of seconds. Once we get the all done message, we can go ahead and close everything and then go back to the PC. Back on the PC, go ahead and connect your tablet once more and then open it up. We are going to go and locate the patched file that we just created using Magisk. Ours is in download folder and it should be the one named Magisk Patched. Okay, and we're going to select it and I'm going to go ahead and drag it to the desktop. Now you can disconnect the tablet. Okay, so here's the first mistake you want to avoid. After I transfer the patch file back to the PC, rename it to boot and then repacking it to LZ4 and then repacking it to tar. The mistake I made specifically was me repacking the whole AP root folder instead of the individual files inside the folder. Now we can see what happens when you try to flash a file that hasn't been archived properly. This is after setting up Odin and loading up all the firmware files including the faulty AP file. We begin the flashing process by pressing the start button. After giving it a couple of seconds, it eventually crashes. Now, here's the right way to do this. Whenever you archive files, you want to make sure to select the files directly and then archiving them, not the root folder as you've seen previously. So in this case, you want to go directly into the AP folder and then selecting all the files and then right clicking them and then adding them to archive. If you've done all that right, this is the second error you might get when you try to flash your tablet, aka fail LZ4 is invalid. In order to fix this, we need to go back to before we repack the patched boot file, aka after transferring the boot file back to the PC. Now go ahead and rename it to boot again and move it to the LZ folder. Now go into the LZ4 folder and open up the command terminal. In the command terminal, I'm going to point to the LZ4 folder by copying and pasting the directory. Once the directory is changed to the LZ4 folder, type in lz4.exe into the terminal followed by this command, dash b6 dash dash content dash size and then the input file which is boot.img followed by the output file we are going to create aka boot.img.lz4 and then hit enter and that will give you the boot file compressing the lz4 format while also patching the error. Now we're almost finished except for one more thing. Let's navigate to the AP folder and then drag the boot.img.lz4 file over to the AP folder. Now look for the user data file and then right click and delete. We need to do this step if we wish to keep our personal data and Android files intact. Now we need to make sure we have completed all the necessary steps aka we have the patched boot file and also deleted the user data file. Once we have confirmed it, select and right click all the files and then go on add to archive. And then make sure to choose tar in the archive format. Rest of the settings we can leave as is and then press OK. The archive process will take around 2-3 to three minutes to complete. After which, we can drag the new AP archive out to the root folder with the other firmware files. Now we have all the necessary files ready, we can move on to the next step, which is flashing. First thing I'm going to do is open up Odin by right clicking and then clicking run as administrator. And then click OK when the pop-up appears. Now we'll move it to the tablet and enter download mode by holding up and down and connecting the USB cable. Then hit volume up to go into download mode. After a couple of seconds, Odin should recognize your tablet. Once your PC has successfully connected to the tablet, we can go ahead and load up the files on Odin. We're going to start by loading the AP file first. Click AP and then locate the AP file. Next click BL and then locate the BL file and then press open. And then lastly, we're going to load the CSC file. You have to be extra careful with this one as there are two CSC files, both that serve different functions. If you flash top CSC file, it will wipe all your data. So if you want to keep your data, make sure to select the home CSC instead. Upon selecting the appropriate CSC file, again, it will take a couple seconds for Odin to fully load. After which, we'll go ahead and uncheck the auto reboot from the settings tab. Now we can begin the flashing process by clicking start. If you follow the instructions exactly to this point, your tablet should start flashing immediately and you won't have to do anything until it finishes by itself. This process shouldn't take too long. For me, it took about close to three minutes, if not a bit less. You'll know when it's finished 
when you get the pass message at the end. And this is what that would look like. Congratulations, you have successfully flashed your tablet with a new firmware. And now you can power down your device by holding power and volume down button for 7 seconds. And when you power it back on, you should see this message, which is normal and it's your tablet optimizing its settings for the apps. You don't have to do anything at this point, the tablet will set itself up. After it's finished optimizing, your tablet will start up as normal. I'm just going to input my login pattern. Looks like it's still setting up or at least finish up with its final touches. Already everything's looking good and most importantly all my apps and data are still here. As far as changes go, I'm not seeing anything too crazy. Looks like just a few subtle changes here and there but overall I'm very pleased with this update and I think it was definitely worth the effort. That's it for the video but before I go I'd give a quick shout out to this reddit user SriHanKP12 who helped me throughout this whole process and to everyone else thank you for watching.